Okay, grab your chapter uh, nine homework pack, and we're going to take a look at a couple of problems. Locate this one. I think it's on uh, page two. I forget exactly which one it's on. But grab grab your uh, grab this guy here, and we will get started. First thing we got to do is figure out what the radius is. So why is this on this section? Because we're going to have a point of 1448. So if I make a right triangle, this means I went 14 units to the right, 48 units up, which means now I can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what the radius of the circle is. 14 squared plus 48 squared equals r squared. Uh, 14 squared, 196. 48 squared must be 2304 or so, I think. 196 plus 2304 is r squared. 2500 is r squared. Take the square root, r is 50. Once you know the radius on most of these problems, this all goes back to stuff that we did in chapter six and chapter eight. So the radius is 50. I do want to point one thing out though. Um, so they ask you for the circumference of the circle. Well, that's two pi r, which will be a hundred pi. And then they ask you for the area of the circle, which is pi r squared. Well, my r squared is right up here. 2,500 pi. And then they ask you for the area of sector AOB and the length of AB. What you do need to be aware of is exactly what sector they're talking about. So they're talking about A to O to B. So one thing you got to make note of is this part is 74 and down here will be 90 more. So my sector AOB is going to be uh, 74 plus 90 or 164 degrees. So when you use the area of the circle to find the area of the sector, you're going to have to do 164 out of 360. And then I know some of you like the proportion method and some of you like the Multiplying, so I'm going to multiply by 2,500 pi. I'll let you do that on your own. Length of AB, lengths have to do with the circumference. Again, AB, I know I'm going the short way. It's two letters. But again, it's we're going to use this 164 out of 360 times 100 pi. That should get you going in the right direction on those problems. Next, locate these... Uh, Simplifying our square roots, I'm not so concerned about uh, the square root of 225. I, uh, you know, we're, we're gonna we're gonna break these things apart. The ones I really want to take a look at are like number three and number eight, etc. Um, so when we're talking about uh, 3 square root 15 times 5 square root 10. First thing is you can multiply, when you're multiplying everything together, we're allowed to multiply in any order. So 3 times 5 is 15. And then the square root of 15 times the square root of 10, I would write this down like this. The square root of 15 is the square root of 3 times the square root of 5. That's the square root of 15. The square root of 10 is the square root of 5 times the square root of 2. And when I multiply all these things together, I'm allowed to go ahead and say, well, the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is 5. So I'm going to do 15 times 5, which is 75. And what's left? So I've taken care of the 15, and I've taken care of these two square root of 5s. I'm left with the square root of 3 times the square root of 2, which will be the square root of 6. 
and now you are done. Okay. I look at one like this down here, this 54 and this 108, and you might be thinking, well, 54, perfect square factor is the square root of 9, and that would be okay. The square root of 9 times the square root of 6. But I would do this as, again, 3 times 5 is 15. And then I would write 108 as the square root of 2 times the square root of 54 times the square root of 54. So my 3 times 5 is here. My 108 is 2 times 54. And this 54 times 54, now that's going to be the number 54. Whenever you take a square root times itself, it's set free. So now I got 54 times 15, whatever that is, grab your calculator, and I will tack on the square root of 2. So we'll get 54 times 15, and then tack on the square root of 2. Eight ten is that right? And there you have it. This guy here, I would have five, and then I have thirty five and forty two. I would do square root five, square root seven, square root seven, square root six, because I know seven times six is forty two. Five times seven is thirty five. These two square root sevens. Multiply a square root seven times square root seven. You get a square root 49, which is just the number seven. That's seven times five, 35. Square root five, square root six, nothing in common. Bring them out. So some simplifying square roots there for you that were on that worksheet. You can continue working on that. Special right triangles, 30, 60, 90 triangle, 45, 45, 90 triangle. Uh, we've talked about 45, 45, 90 this year. It comes up with an isosceles right triangle. Isosceles right triangle. In an isosceles right triangle, if the legs have length A, then the hypotenuse has length of length what? A square root 2. Let's take a look as to why. If this is A and this is A, what we're going to do is A squared plus A squared equals, we'll call it H for hypotenuse squared. And I get 2A squared equals the hypotenuse squared. And now if I wanted to solve for h squared, what is the hypotenuse in terms of a? I'll take the square root and the square root. So I will get the square root of 2a squared, which I'm allowed to do the square root of 2 and the square root of a squared. And what is a squared? It's square root of a squared. It's a. a times the square root of 2 equals h. The good thing that this is what this is going to do for us is every time we know one side of a 45 45 90 triangle, remember this is isosceles. This is called an isosceles right triangle. If we know one of the legs, we know the other one since they're the same. And then all we have to do is multiply by the square root of 2, and boom, we got the hypotenuse. If we know the hypotenuse, and I want to figure out what A was, one of these sides, all I have to do is divide by the square root of 2. We'll take a look at a couple of examples with that here in a moment. 30, 60, 90 triangle. It's a little bit more involved. Um, you do need to focus on where is the 30 degree angle and where is the 60 degree angle. In a 30, 60, 90, the shorter leg, the shorter leg will always be opposite the 30. This will be the shorter leg, remember. Smallest angle is always opposite the smallest side. And then the longer leg will be opposite the 60, and then the hypotenuse is opposite the 90, and it's always the biggest. It says down here that the, oops, the, if the shorter leg is x, so I'm going to write x is the shorter leg, then the longer leg is going to be 
x times the square root of 3. This also works itself out nicely. And the hypotenuse has a length of 2x. Now, you can see, two of these look like they're fairly easy to deal with. This is a single x. This is 2 times that value of x. This one down here gets to be a little bit more tricky because it has the square root, but it's not that bad. What you want to do is always identify what's across from the 30 degree angle. There's my x. Boom. If I know the one across from the 30, I double it, multiply times 2, I know the hypotenuse. If I know the one opposite the 30, I multiply it by the square root of 3, maybe some simplification, and I'm good to go. Always work off of the 30 degree angle. If I know the hypotenuse, cut it in half, I know this one, times the square root of 3, I know that one. The only time it gets a little bit tricky is when I know the one opposite the 60, and I need to divide by the square root of 3 in order to get this side. And then I double it, and I get that side. So we'll be able to take a look at a couple of examples here. We start with this guy. This is a isosceles, so this is going to be a 45, 45. Let's find the missing sides. If that's 14, that's 14. We said earlier that if we have an isosceles right triangle, I have a, a, a square root 2. Maybe I shouldn't use a for this one. Maybe I should use x's again as well, because this one has an a in the problem. So I'm going to do it's 45, 45, 90, x, x, x root 2. So really, all I have to do here is multiply the leg by the square root of 2. The answer is 14 times the square root of 2, and it gives you 14 square root of 2. That's all there is to it. These x's were replaced by 14, so that means that's replaced by 14 square root of 2. Pretty straightforward. Next one. This is a 30, 60, 90. Always identify the 30, always identify the uh, hypotenuse, is always the one on the side. There's the side opposite the 60. We just got done saying something that looked like this. If this was the 30, 30 is the nice one. It's always going to be the x. The hypotenuse is always 2 times it, and the one opposite the 60 is always x times the square root of 3. How do you go backwards to undo, to unhitch itself from the square root of 3 in order to get the side opposite the 30? In order to go from here to here, I can divide by that square root of 3. How do I get rid of it? I divide by it. So if I go, if this was x square root of 3, this is now 12. a is 12 because I'm dividing out the square root of 3. Once I have the side opposite the 30, boom. Double it. Oobly, doobly. 12 times 2 is 24. B is 24. They'll always be in the ratio of x is always the, the single side. This one will be times the square root of 3. This one's times 2. You'll get the hang of it as you do some more practice with these. Again, identify the side opposite the 30. I know the side opposite the 30 is 6. Immediately after I know the side opposite the 30, I like to take care of the hypotenuse because the hypotenuse is always going to be 2 times that. If this is x, this is 2x. So if this is 6, 6 times 2 is 12. a is 12. If this is x opposite the 30, Opposite the 60 is x square root 3, which will be 6 square root 3. 6 square root 3. So some of you are probably thinking, well, this is pretty easy. When's the catch? There isn't too much of a catch. But here we go. I have the side opposite the 60, which is 9er. Did I hear a 9er in there? I did. This is x square root 3. If x square root 3 is 9, if x square root 3 is equal to 9, how do I go backwards and solve for x? 
I'll have to take n by 9. And notice I'll end up dividing by 3. 9 divided by the square root of 3. That's what this side x will be. But I'm not allowed to leave a square root in a denominator. So I have to do what's called rationalize the denominator. What do you multiply a square root 3 by in order to set it free? I'm going to multiply it by itself. But if you multiply the bottom of a fraction, you must also multiply the top. So I end up with 9 square root 3 over 3. Well, I can actually simplify 9 over 3. It's equal to 3. The answer here is 3 square root 3. That's what this side length over here is. This is the side opposite the 30. How do you go from the x to the hypotenuse? We do 2 times it. 2 times 3 square root 3 will be 6 square root 3. So the ones that are hardest are when we are given the side opposite the 60. How do you go backwards from x square root 3 to x? I have to divide by the square root of 3. You can see a nice little algebraic equation here. x times the square root of 3 equals 9. Well, how do I solve for x? Divide by the square root of 3. That's what I did. In one side. And then I had to do this little simplification, which you have done <clears throat> at least once in your life, multiplying the top and the bottom by the square root to undo it, and then I simplified. This is going to be a 45, 45, 90, and this is the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is going to be the x times the square root of 2 side. These are the x's. How do I go backwards if this is equal to, if x square root 2 equals 4, how do I go backwards? I'm going to need to take the 4 and divide by the square root of 2. I'm not allowed to leave it like that. I need to multiply the top and the bottom times the square root of 2. 4 square root 2 over 2. 4 over 2 is 2 root 2. Notice, if I multiply 2 root 2, times the square root of 2, what do I get? 2 root 2 times the square root of 2. Well, that's 2 times 2, which is 4, which is what we have right there. Isn't that great? Again, the most difficult one, this is x square root 3, which is equal to 12. How do I go backwards to solve for x? x will be 12 over the square root of 3. Multiply by square root of 3, square root of 3. 12 square root of 3 over 3, which is 12 over 3. 4 root 3. I get 4 root 3. So this one over here is 4 square root of 3. But that's opposite the 30. How do you go from opposite the 30 to the 2x side? Ubali. Nubily. 2 times 4 square root 3. 8 square root 3. And that's what we got going on for today. You're going to want to put these in a safe place. 45, 45, 90. If these are x, this is x times the square root of 2. You multiply to get this, you divide to get that. 30, 60, 90, make sure you have that in a safe place. I've got the 30, this is x, 2x, x squared of 3. I always work off of this guy. Double it to get that, times the square root of 3. If you know this one, cut it in half, you got this, times the square root of 3. If you know this one, you got to divide by the square root of 3. That's the part that's a little bit more difficult.